industrial design today. I'm here to present my master thesis. Visual communication for behavior change, changing users' behavior regarding air quality. Let's think about the air we are breathing. Everyone knows that the, we must breathe air 24 hours. Whatever you are, there is no execution. That is all you think. But we don't know what we are breathing pretty much, whether we breathe clean air or unclean air. Some would think that it's a problem in some other countries like uh, China, Korea, or other Eastern Asian countries. However, indoor air quality is generally two to five times worse than the outdoor air quality regardless its location. And we spend the time around 87% inside buildings, which means that we could have unhealthy air quality in our home, in our office, or in this place at the moment. However, we cannot know it. Why? Because the air is invisible. If we don't know something, we cannot even think about the changing something. However, what if we are aware of the air quality in this room, in your office, in a bus, in a metro, or even, a, even in the middle of the street? Today, um, I introduced the devices we can be easily aware of the current air quality whatever you are, and to get relevant suggestions reflecting your context. Smart air detector, which is the left sign, is a data measuring device for real-time air quality. Collective data goes to user mobile application, so the people can get the behavior suggestions, what they can do to improve the air quality in the situation. It visualizes the hypothetical experience of the current air quality and delivery through the animated emotions colors, and the dust animation. People can quickly understand the current air quality in the place and can make an action based on the personalized suggestions. So this city is about like finding interconnections between visual communication design and behavior change, and then investigating users who are differently motivated regarding air quality. And then applying uh, findings from the research is to a case study the smart amplifier, which is a product of Philips, uh, that is a part of this project. So, main research question of this thesis is how visual communication would influence the behaviors of users who are differently motivated to improve air quality. So, basically, this thesis mainly consists of the desk research for investigating holistic understanding and the finding the connections between behavior change and the visual communication design, and the usual research is for the investigating users' diverse motivations and the contextual differences through the online survey, user interviews, and the course and workshops. Case studies through the iterative design with user evaluation for a Philips Smart Amplifier, which is a product of Philips, and the final design outcomes came Smart Air Detector and the Philips Smart Air mobile application. Let's start with my own experience. Last year, I was in Singapore, and then there was a severe air quality issue in the country at the time. So I was needed to wear a mask whenever I uh, want to go out. So basically, every day I check the air quality before going out. However, I stopped checking it and the wearing a mask after a certain time. Maybe at some point I was uh, unmotivated to do that. But after this experience, it reminded me of a critical question. Can visual representations really change people's behavior? As we know, we can access to the great amount of data regarding ourselves, behaviors, and environments through the diverse internet-connected devices. To communicate with end user like me, the data sets are visualized and delivered to the device so that people can see and understand it. So based on the visual communication, people make the decisions and the behaviors. So it's a pretty much about like ideological utilization of data. There is a data and there is well visualized the contents and the people make the decisions and the behaviors. Uh, Colin Ware uh, claimed that the, the critical question of information visualization is how best to transform the data into something that people can understand for optimal decision making. 
However, as I experienced before, there is a still gap between visual communication and the user's behavior change. Well, it's not about like delivering whatever visualization to people. The visualization should be persuasive, increase the motivation of the behavior, and the relevant to people. So to bring those questions and experience into this study, I defined the study scope, finding the connections between visual communication design and the behavior change in the context of air quality. So to get the holistic understanding about human behavior and the visual perception, I conducted desk research in the beginning. So there are three entities affecting our behaviors, human, information, and our environment. First, there are two main systems for the human brain, automatic system and the reflective system. The automatic system is like a, like a Homer Simpson. If you think about the situation, you uh, make a pool decision and then you just uh, skip your working out because if you're late or something. So it's like uncontrolled, effortless, associative and fast and unconscious. But in case of like a reflective system, it's like um, it's a spogging structure. It's very controlled, effortful, deductive, slow, and self-aware. Information is mainly categorized by two symbols, sensory symbols and arbitrary symbols. Sensory symbols is like um, the thing you can understand without learning. So it's very, uh, it stimulates the early stage of neural processing, and then it's effective, fast, and uh, stable across the individuals, cultures, and time. In case of like arbitrary symbol, you should learn it. You should be educated to understand it. So it stimulates the late stage of the neural processing, but it's a powerful than sensory symbols when it is understood. Environment has a full categories physical, personal, social, and the cultural context. It's a variable so you have depending on your country, culture, and all the surroundings. So there are numerous elements, and then it consists of your environment. Our visual perception can bring the emotional interaction as well. So visual stimulus like uh, color, pictorial images, animation, and more could effectively bring the emotional and experiential interaction from the other recognition to decision making. For example, when you see this uh, emotion in here, it, it can trigger the expression on the viewer's own face in the absence of conscious recognition. So by comparing those theories together somehow, we could see some of the commonalities in visual perception, reflective system, sensory symbols, emotional interaction is basically stimulate the stimulating early stage of neural processing. In case of like automatic system, arbitrary symbols, rational thinking is more likely related with the late stage of neural processing. And then let's check out briefly the how our behavior happens. In false behavior model, there are three elements making a behavior, motivation, ability, and trigger. So motivation is like a desire or willingness to do something. Ability is like a difficulty of a behavior or one's capability to do the behavior. Trigger is like a cue making people finally behave certain actions. So when we see this graph, when the motivation is high enough and the ability is high enough, and then there is a proper trigger in the right timing, the behavior happens in, in this green gray area. So the important thing is utilizing those theoretical backgrounds for a design challenge by considering a specific context and users. Since these theories that I've investigated cannot be applied in the same way for every case. Because the people have a different motivation and they have so many different contextual differences. So to understand the people's motivation and context, I conducted usual research. So before starting usual, usual research, I built a hypothesis. Depending on the user's motivation level, the ways of stimulating behavior change in the context of air quality would be different. So I divided the user groups as their motivation level. And uh, the first user group is like unmotivated about the having clean air. The second group is like a somewhat motiva motivated, but they do not know very well the relationship between the house condition and the air quality. And the user group three is like very motivated well, and they behave well. 
and the usual four is motivated well because they have the health issues like um, asthma or some other um, diseases. So during the usual research, I conducted online survey, usual interviews, and coordinated workshops. So basically, online survey was for all the user groups, and then I narrowed down a bit to user group two and three in the user user interviews, and then I uh, landed in user group two in the coordinator workshop. So basically, online survey was conducted with uh, 104 respondents who have the uh, 16 nationalities for 20 days, and the user interviews conducted with uh, six interviews for 10 hours. And the people had a different environment context, all different environment context. And the workshop finally invited the six people and they conducted two times and they had a four activities, mood board, creating all own behavior card, design exercise, and evaluating initial ideas. So I found out that something very important in this project. The first thing is that People's motivation levels regarding air quality strongly influenced how they accept the visual language and then how they behave. And secondly, people want to know the air quality in which they are standing. So like here, when, they, when you go to a cafe, they want to know about the air quality in the place. Invisibility of air. People usually assume the air quality in a place because it's invisible and the feel the invisible air quality through the visual, visual elements like the flying dust. People primarily feel air quality rather than radically understand it. And then numbers are insufficient to deliver the experience of the air quality, so I needed to find the alternative. And the timing of the triggering is the critical issue. Most of alerts are distracting when you think about mobile alerts. But the negative situation, like unhealthy air quality, should be notified for everyone since it's directly connected with health issues. People need to have a behavioral suggestions in diverse air quality, which means that they want to know about the air quality in the space, but at the same time, they want to know about what they can do. The most important finding that I got from the user research was Awareness is a basis for building a motivation. Which means that if we don't know, if we don't have the awareness about the air quality in a space, how we could build the motivation for it. So awareness and motivation can be increased by the interventions considering experience, information, and context. And I will explain what it is. So like what, what it means the enhancing experience in this context? It's like a visualizing the invisible air to deliver the simulated experience of the air quality in perceptual way. Second, information. There are so many information, they can know everything, but they do not want to know everything at the same time. So information should be layered to provide the right quantity of information and contents to different people. and the intervention should consider about the context of users. So providing, issue per, uh, providing easy personalization reflecting users' contextual differences is critical. So basically, I adapted a behavior model that I mentioned before. So the motivation ability trigger is the false behavior model, but I added it like one element before the motivation, awareness, and to support, the, to support the increasing awareness and motivation. I put the subordinated uh, elements, experience, information, and context. So I applied those findings into case study. So this, these are the products that Philips is uh, selling now, FE Fire and the mobile application. So the FE Fire to find the air and the mobile application track it and they show some data. Um, design process was like this, so I initiated like a very deep research for the Phyllis products and the use, I used the, the product in, in the real life context and I also interviewed the Phyllis instruction designer who participated in the designing the application and also did the iterative design process with the usual evaluation. So these are the methods that I have done during the process. So and then I did the evaluation with the Phyllis people and the people in user group two, two times. 
So during the process, I redefine the problem, I and the completely define the target behavior that I want to challenge through the project. So this was the first prototype. And I also made a workflow to make it more clear. And I brought to the Netherlands. And then I met eight uh, Philips employees, people researchers, data good designers, a data scientist, uh, US designers, and uh, directors. So we had uh, seven meetings for three days. So after that evaluation, I had a really con uh, constructive feedback for target behaviors and the design ideas in general. They suggest me to enlarge the possibility through the, using the data more. And um, they ask me like how I can involve users more in terms of using these digital services. And um, they also ask me like uh, what is the key storytelling of this project. So I reflected it immediately after turning back. So I, I built it a quick and prototype, quick and dirty prototype, and then I organized every element that I had to consider during this project. So I brought this research to the usual, usual evaluation, second evaluation, with the full participant in the usual group two. And I specifically challenged on the three target behaviors. And I gave like three different contexts to the uh, evaluators, so they needed to think in, uh, in the context for making some of like evaluations. So the, the brief, uh, result of the second evaluation was Overall, it is very positive. Most of participants answer that the delivered design interventions are highly likely to change their behaviors in the given context. So, here is the final design outcome, as I mentioned before. Let's, think of, let's, let's see the overview of the design concept. So, underground, there are micro persuasive techniques, and then it supports this subordinate concept, visualizing invisible air for delivering experience and the contextualized information with the personalization. And then it supports the main concept, increasing motivation and awareness of people. And then it specifically challenges on the behavior challenges, behavior changes. First one is opening windows, blowing up candles, and the wearing a mask. And the, these all elements actually support the health living, which is core idea of Philips in, in their health continuum. So basically, uh, it measures the quality and it shows the, the current status. Smart air detector is a device measuring real-time air quality, and it brings emotional interactions by bringing the hypothetical experience through the emoticon colors and the dust animation. And um, it brings also like a quick and instant understanding. It stimulates the reflective system of human that I mentioned before through these sensory symbols. So people can easily understand them, people get the idea. It's very portable. People can easily carry it for any place. And then it's connected to the mobile application, so it enables to bring more personalized and uh, contextualized suggestions. It's a storytelling medium that would be able to bring more conversation and overall the curiosity of the people regarding their public. Which means that uh, I bring this and that I can initiate a conversation with other people like, hey, do you know the air quality is like this in this place? And that actually we can think about this. And people can, other people can be aware about the air quality. So you can attach it on the wall, or you can carry it on your back, easily. Um, yeah, and then let's see about the UI design. So basically it's, the main menus are consist of dashboard, which is representing all the data visualizations about the air quality and the insights, so people can get the personalized insights and the health information is also personalized so that people can get the, what is the important health issue for me. And the filters is representing the current status of the filter of the as smart amplifier. And then you can update your profile and see the, the registered information. And there's also a control panel and the setting. Actually, I tried to explain the whole user interface design here, but I realized that it's impossible. So I dropped the all actually, and then I will explain in a, in a context later. So for the application, I layered 
information depending on the, their user groups, which have the uh, different motivation level. So, simple information and the non-active alerts is for user group one, who is not motivated to have the clean air. And the moderate information for the user group two with the situation alert functions. And the detailed information and the active alerts for the user group three and four. The system provides not only relevant information based on the user's current motivation, but also it encourages people to get to go to the next level by increasing their awareness and motivation constantly. So to talk about the UI design at a practical level, I go to the persona, Vera, 23 years old, Minshko, who's living in Shanghai now. Uh, she, she is a representative person in user group two. And uh, let's see what she said. She said, that I cannot see the polluted air, so I usually think that if the weather is sunny or rainy, the air is clean. And the, the number 52 doesn't give me something. It may be the same as like 15,000 for me. So she's uh, definitely a typical character in the age group too. So as I said before, this disease challenges three target behaviors. But, there, uh, but here I present only one story. So please check the previous thesis if you are interested in other challenges. So here's the story. So Bera is working in a cafe in Shanghai now as a part-timer. So she's working and she attached her smart detector on the wall and she just working it. And uh, suddenly the smart air detector says that the air quality in the place is moderate. And then it also send the data and the notification to her mobile so she can check it, okay, there is a bit moderate. So also she, she can see the, what is the possible behavioral suggestions she can take. So she can understand it and she finally decided to open the window for a while. And later she can see the clean air to the detector. So in this story, the app triggers better to see the current air quality and ask us a question. First, where are you? So she selects indoor. It guides better for behavior suggestions she can consider and she landed it to open window windows page. So it's a certain pages. Um, <coughs> the reason why the system suggested to open the window because the current it analyzed the current outdoor air quality and then in comparison with that outdoor air quality is cleaner than the indoor air quality so it, op it suggests opening window to her so um, she decided to open windows for a while so that she could have increased awareness and the experiencing motivation then the system gives an instant feedback with a great message and then later she checks the there is an unread message on the application. So she opens it and then app shows that the air quality is clean now. But I could have reworked by seeing the cleaned air. But I could see the reword by seeing the cleaned air to so the her behavior. Because she opened the window, so she cleaned the air actually. So she could have the rewards from the behavior. The system asks her what happened, and the better answer is that maybe it was because of she hasn't ventilated the air for a while. By investing her time, like uh, the effort pushing the data into the mobile application, the system can collect the data for making personalized suggestions for later. So, um, as a conclusion, the hypothesis that I built before was proved. Depending on the user's motivation levels, the ways of stimulating behavior change in the context of air quality would be different. And my answer is yes. Visual interventions aiming to effectively change behaviors of users should reflect the motivation levels in the context of air quality. And then uh, I also find the answers about the research question that I asked. How, how visual communication would influence the behaviors of users who are differently motivated to improve their quality? Interventions can deliver visuals 
stimulating users' awareness to increase their motivation level, which ultimately influences the behavior changes. So to increase the awareness and, and motivation, I use the three methods, visualizing air, layer information structure, and the providing personalization, selecting users' contextual differences. Uh, changing someone's behaviors in the visual communication is a really, really challenging task. There are so many factors influencing a behavior, and um, even the same elements could be understood, understood in a very different way. However, I've seen a possibility that the visual design can strongly influence people's behaviors and then attitudes by considering how a behavior works and how, how visual stimulus operate, operate within the perceiver's mind. So designers, including me, everyone here, including me, uh, yeah, should understand the ways of influencing people's behaviors properly and use the knowledge in designing a product or a service and uh, keep examining whether the interventions are successful or not to make a real change. So, yeah, right? this is a, one feedback that I got from Philips recently. And then I want to say thank you for listening to this presentation. Thank you.